doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Yo, I got much love for everybody up in here. I represent for the borough, though, you know what I'm saying? First thing we need to do is everybody get up off these seats because we about to flip yeah, this for check real. Yeah, it out. Uh. Is there any big stories that stand out to Mace? Oh, yeah. So many. I mean, so many. And one time everybody was on a plane and the plane started shaking and it was everybody first time on a private jet, right? We all from the ghetto. We don't know them, but no private jet. Yeah. So we on a private jet and the joint just started shaking. Everybody's getting scary because the, the plane is shaking out of control like it's about to crash. And then Biggie puts his head down with his hoodie on him and pull out his CD, ready to die. Oh. <laughs> wow. Wow. Everybody started laughing. Wow. And it just made the whole trip better because everybody's stomach was rolling over. Everybody was super scared. It was storming. Everybody got to eat, you know what I'm saying? I found something I was good at. I'm just trying to flip it, yo. Just keep it going, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to slack at all. Just represent for my peoples, my borough, and my family. Big seemed like that kind of guy, like he would just, you know, break yeah. the silence in a room and make everybody smile and have a good time. And, you know, before you know it, everybody was best friend. The guys, when I was in, honey, snuck up in my spot with the demo tape while I was on the toilet. You handle your business out here. I'm going to have my business in the bathroom. See, Big, I don't know how he, he was a genius, man. He, 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 everything he said, he could just be saying something like, like you think he's playing, but it's, you walk away with it, like it sticks with you. Mm -hmm. So it was just, he always would, he would always want to see me or see anybody, everybody doing them, their best. And um, so it was just all, all about doing your thing. Go, go do it all, go get it all. Hit that note for me, we've been hitting all day. Every time I close my eyes, what? I wake up feeling so holy. Um, what was Big's writing style like being in the studio with him? That's who I learned how to do that from. I learned I learned how to approach records from Big and in that way because he was he would just sit there and just smoke and just listen to the beat. And every time he would come up with a record, my studio session would be like the next day. <laughs> so uh, everybody always say, "Well, how were you able to really come up with that album?" Big had a lot to do with it because he had the pressure so so strong on the other artists because every time we thought we had a good record he would come back with another record that make you say well what can i write after that he just yeah. wrote, he just wrote 10 crack commandment i yeah. thought i had a record i thought i had a street record yeah and then you come in and hear that the next day and then the a and r d die angeletti would say man we gotta go back to the drawing board then we make a super sexy record and then big come back with you must be used to me spending <laughs> so it was like every record we made the next day he would have something even better so it kept everybody on their toes you know that's a lot more to it than just singing though you gotta have the moves the stamina I, I feel blessed in a way because I was able to know a lot of things at an early age I was able to take in a lot of that information and that's kind of how I felt when I was walking away from music. Like I have so much information that was shared with me that I never really got to share with anybody. I tried to do it with like the French Montanas and people like that. Give them that insight because 
what Big gave me was like a plethora of information that not just writing, just how to deal with Puff, how to be an artist, how to take care of your people, just everything, you know? I love it when they call me Big Pop. But he was like a father figure to us in, in some degree because yeah. of how he how he carried himself. Everybody would shoot. And he was the first person that I saw as an artist that was greater than myself, but I didn't feel in competition with him. Mm. Like he had this aura about him that you knew he was better than you, but he didn't make you feel like he was better than you. Yeah. I heard you was running things. I see you still running your mouth. Yo, it's all good. We can take it to the court right now. I think I can take you out with the street clothes on, baby. And if you became, if you came, you didn't want to take his spot. You just wanted to be in that light. Yeah, so yeah, when yeah, I went yeah. home, I was writing to be on that level. But I didn't feel like I needed to try to get his spot. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, I think that's the, the original thing I could say about him. He had like a piece about him that everybody that came around walked in that same piece. Hey, when I first started writing rhymes, I wasn't all that nice, you know what I'm saying? But I was around people that knew how to rhyme, and it just built my skills up even more. I, I knew what I wanted to do. It's all about being... When you was a young coming up, and you was, you know, you was a young head, a hip-hop head, who were some of the people that you liked, that you checked for? I like everybody. I like all the music, you know, because it was just something, something for me to listen to. You know, as long as they played it, I liked it. Fat Boys, Run DMC, you know what I'm saying? Dougie, everybody. Such a charismatic, charming, incredible storyteller, likable guy. Like he, like he's forever loved by hip hop. That's just that's it. It's big. Because it's just the way he was his said. honesty his brutal honesty you know black and ugly as ever however i stay coochie down to the socks you know like he he can do that like a richard Pryor he was in in, in that way where he can make fun of himself you know and it, it just seems just such a charismatic person yo check it out notorious b.i.g man and we've had that in common for a while, but we always was competitive with each other as well. You in know, every way, in fashion very, and music. Fashion, and music, we all we, we all in the same business, role. we all in the same field. So yeah. we competitive, but friendly competitors even along the way. Like when he uh, won a fashion award, you know, I sent him the present. So we would send each other presents <laughs> what, and what things did you like send that. Him? Uh, I would do stuff like I will uh, send him cigars and Patron on the uh, red carpet. I make sure when he got on the red carpet, you know, if somebody came and gave him some, yeah. you know, fresh but you're not trying cigars. To, no, I'm not trying to show him up. Really, yeah. just and really. But you're not like, trying to top him in toys either, are you? No, no. We, we more so just can be competitive. Not even so. Uh, I'm better than you. Just better moves, like the execution of something. I mean, I'm just working, you know what I'm saying? I'm a type of person that's going every song I do. I put it, make sure it's on the album. You know, we're just going to do joints until we comfortable that we got another hit album. I don't want to come less than what I came before, so. Blood smoke coming out the nose is all a nigga knows. Flipping on foes, putting tags on toes. Watching the stash grow, clocking the cash flow. The neighborhood grave digger getting paid so much. All the bitches want to see a nigga. I guess they figure I'm paid. I want to get laid. Or since I got loot, I want to knock boots. Huh. Ladies love Big. Love them. I mean, if he wasn't secure with yourself and you hung around Big, you would have a problem. Big was the man on tour, man. He embraced that part of the life, man. We had a lot of fun with a lot of chicks. <laughs> Hotel parties, backstage parties show parties. It's a hell of a good life. When people watch whatever type of show and they see videos from Biggie, they see the raw, you know? I mean, I'm down for whatever, yo. I mean, I made music for everybody, you know what I'm saying? I mean, necessarily underground, not necessarily pop. It's for everybody, you know what I'm saying? You either gonna get with it or you not. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna be here, be everywhere, pumping it. I'm just trying to ram it down your throat. <laughs> yeah, I can take it. A lot of a lot of people say, okay, once the artist sells all right, a certain amount of records, and he then becomes commercial. Now, me myself, I think if you started making raw shit, it will always remain raw. If people buy it, that, that's, that's a blessing, exactly. you know. And uh, 
I mean, how do you feel about that as far as people saying, well, okay, yeah, it was raw in the beginning, but now, you know, they're selling records or whatever, and I'm not necessarily talking about Biggie or Junior Mafia, but I'm talking about how that happens to artists in general, because with Busta Rhymes, now everybody's going, yeah, Busta, he raw, but, you know what I mean, this and the other, it's just media, closely. Whatever. <laughs> to me, it's just like... You got to feed your families, man. You know what I'm saying? It's not even to the point where it's a sense of keeping it real and keeping it, keeping it real is making sure your mother got a house and that your family is taken care of, man. No matter what I say, if I just start rapping my flowers and it sells four million, I'm straight. My family is straight. <laughs> Regardless of what you may think about it, it had to be something to somebody for it to sell four million records. You know what I'm saying? I mean, me, myself, I started off with Juicy. You know what I'm saying? Straight. R&B track singing on the hook. So anything else you anything else you see from me, you should be expecting to see that type of stuff. But me being from the hood, straight grimy nigga, I'm gonna always have some grimy shit forever. Cause that's just all I know. But the radio stuff is kind of easy. So and it sells. I mean, once you learn the formula, why would you want to go against it? You know what I'm saying? I know Busta ain't trying to come back out with no hardcore rhyme and all messed up where you can't really understand what he's saying. He know. The formula now, he know how to come out with joints that's gonna make people jump. I bet he's still on that same flow. They don't wanna come no different. I'm supposed to be talking that shit with them niggas that be fucked up, they ain't got no money, they aggravated. The artists will just be aggravated talking that bullshit, they ain't keeping it real. Well, I'm broke. <laughs> what the fuck you telling me? <laughs>